In this video, we're going to demonstrate the uh, super mesh technique. As you look at this, you'll notice that there are three meshes. This one here to the left, and we'll label the current in that uh, that mesh current I1. We have a mesh up here, and we'll call this mesh current I2. And we have a mesh here with a mesh current that we'll label I3. And further, before we even get started, we'll notice that separating mesh 2 from mesh 3 is a branch that contains a current source. And as we mentioned in the past, we don't have a, a numerical or mathematical relationship between the voltage across a, a current source and the current itself. That will then require us to do a super mesh, which we will be writing around there. Let's get started first of all though by writing the uh, mesh current equation around this mesh number one. Starting down here in the lower left hand corner we have going pl minus to plus that'll be a negative 12 volts and then across this 5 ohm resistor we'll have a voltage drop of 5, the resistance of 5 times the current going through that which is I1 minus I2 plus the voltage drop across this 3 ohm resistor, which is going to be 3 times I1 minus I3, and the sum of those voltage drops must equal 0. Now the super mesh, starting here at this point, going up and around the 15 ohm or across the 15 ohm resistor, we have the voltage drop there being 15 times I2, now continuing on down here, not going around the, this branch here because that's where the dependence or the current source is, but con con continuing on down here across the 10 ohm resistor, we have a voltage drop of plus 10 times I3 plus, now continuing around here across the 3 ohm resistor, plus 3 times, now the current going in this direction is I3 minus I1. I3 minus I1 plus the voltage drop across that 5 ohm resistor is 5 times and again because we're going from right to left the current going in that direction will be I2 minus I1 I2 minus I1 the sum of those terms must equal 0 and finally the third equation that we need for these three unknowns comes from the relationship between I2, I3 and this current source in this case, I2 is going in the direction of the current, of the current source, so we're going to have that I2 minus I3, which is the current going through that branch in terms of the mesh currents, is going to equal 2 amps. So we have our three equations in three unknowns. Let's go ahead and combine terms. Taking the first equation, we have I1 times, we've got 5 there, plus 3 is 8, plus I2 times, we have a negative 5, plus I3, we have a negative 3, and then we have this positive, tw or this negative 12 volts on the left hand side, we bring it to the other side as a positive 12 volts. And there's our first equation. Second equation, combining like terms, we have I1, and in this we have a negative 3 and a negative 5, that makes negative 8, times I1 plus I2, times we've got 15, plus 5 is 20, times I2 plus I3, We've got 10 I3 plus 3 is 13 I3 equals, and there are no constants there, so the sum of those terms equals 0. Finally, our third equation is I2 times 1 plus I3 times a negative 1 equals 2. And we have our three equations and three unknowns. It's all ready for your calculator or however you choose to solve three, your system of three equations and three unknowns. 
And when you do, we get the following. I1 is equal to 2.03 amps. I2 is equal to 1.28 amps. And I3 is equal to negative point, point seven two amps. Let's do a couple of consistency checks here just to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. Not to prove that our work was correct, but at least to look at a couple of do a couple of calculations that would be consistent with what we know to be true. For example, we know that I two minus I three equals two amps. So I two that is um, 1.28 minus I3. Well, I3 is a minus 0.72 amps. The sum of those are supposed to equal 2 amps. And sure enough, that works there. And of course, we could plug those values into any one of those equations and prove that our solutions are correct. But now that we know what I1, I2, and I3 are, let's use them to say, for example, now determine what the voltage drop is across this current source. We said that we couldn't numerically calculate it based upon the current going through it, but now that we know the currents around it, we can write a KVL once again around that loop and solve for the voltage across the current. Starting here and going clockwise, across that 3 ohm resistor, we're going to have 3 times I3 minus I1 now, going across this current source with the voltage as referenced, plus to minus, that represents a voltage drop. So it would be plus V. Now, coming down across here, that would be plus 10, oops, plus uh, 10 times I3 equals, back to where we started from, zero. Now we plug in our values for I1, I2, and I3, and we have 3 times I3. Th so 3 times I3, well, I3 is a negative 0.72 amps. Negative 0.72 minus I1, which is 2.03 amps, plus V plus 10 times I3, which is a negative 0.72. 2 amps, the sum of those things has to equal 0. Solving this for V gives us V is equal to 15.45 volts. Alrighty, now looking at this source, we see the current is referenced into the negative terminal of our voltage and leaving the positive terminal, so it's acting as a source. And we can then say that the power being generated by that source is equal to negative I times V, which is equal to negative I, which is 2, times V, which is 15.45. And the power then would be equal to a negative, what is that, uh, 30.9 30 watts. The fact that it's negative means it's energy being put into the circuit from the source. So once again, once we know all three of the mesh currents, we can determine any voltage or current, or for that matter, power or any other quantity that we might want to know within this circuit.